everyone, to the Sickos Committee podcast. This is our podcast for the evening of March 26th, 2024. I'm usually on my bullshit at the beginning, but I'm not going to do it today because we have a special guest today. Liam from Well, There's Your Problem podcast and a bunch of other stuff, too. Liam, how are you, sir? I am terrific. I'm thrilled to be here. It's been a busy day in the podcast minds and the Twitter it's, minds. I tell you, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's incredible to have you on here because listening to Well, There's Your Problem was like my COVID slash I had back surgery slash whatever podcast. So thank you all for getting me through a lot of time on a lot of painkillers. You helped. <laughs> Happy to help. That's why we're here. Go. Uh, Pick girl. How are you, ma'am? I'm good. Happy Tuesday. Tuesday. Beth, how are you? I'm on my second podcast of the day, just like you. So I'm doing That's great. That's right. Yes. <laughs> and Kamesh? I, I am also on my second podcast of the day because I, I did one on, on lunch of <laughs> Mark. God. My real job. We, this is, oh my God. <laughs> Y'all, we sound so goddamn insufferable. We are. We oh, are. Oh, yeah. This is my, yeah, my third, oh, my third podcast today. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's what I, that's what I do. I do that's podcast. What I, you, know, you know, instead of God. eating lunch, I, I podcast on lunch. What is wrong with me? I would. So you were that. eating lunch when you studied the blade. <laughs> So was, Liam, for, for our listeners, Liam, like, what are your fandoms? What are what are who do you support? Okay, so I I I am a bit confusing in this. I actually uh, like there was some confusion on Twitter just a few days ago as to the, the teams that I support. Okay. So I grew up in beautiful Central Pennsylvania, but but neither of my parents are from Pennsylvania. My mom oh. is from South Jersey, and my dad is from Boston. So I grew up supporting sort of a hodgepodge of teams uh i became a, like be, got very into sports as like a young kid to a teenager where the patriots were making their run uh and then i i in my infinite wisdom married a diehard eagles fan uh, so oh I, now, I have hit them low hit them high tattoos uh <laughs> i yeah i have the fight song tattooed on me uh but i i i went to Drexel and then Temple and then finally graduated from Rutgers. I uh, I cheer I cheer for any school that like will have me basically, in terms of college and then pros. I uh, I support the the hated and feared and loathed Boston Celtics, I uh, gotcha. and the Bruins and then also the Phillies and the Eagles because I can't in good conscience support the Boston Red Sox at this point, uh, given what they're doing to baseball. Yep. Uh, yeah, but in terms of college, I will I will root for anyone that'll have me. I uh, I have a fun story about my fandom, why I cheer for Ole Miss, which is that in the spring of or fall of 2015, I was breaking I was breaking up with my ex girlfriend after like a four year relationship, mm -hmm. and I was like on some some listicle website that was like where the and I was like where are the best places to tailgate. It was like the Grove. <laughs> yep. So so we got in his truck and bought tickets to Ole Miss Fresno State <laughs> uh, and watched them uh, Chad was it Chad Kelly? Yep, Chad Kelly. Yeah. Yep, Kelly. Chad Kelly. Watch Chad Kelly absolutely fucking demolish Fresno State. <laughs> 73 to 16. We slept in his truck and so I've just sort of aligned myself with Ole Miss. Uh, that's the only weird like outlier I guess. Uh, my dad went to UConn Law, so I've been pulling for the Huskies. And my mom went to a bunch of team, bunch of schools that are all bad at sports. There you go. This is it's it's interesting because you do college football enough, and like you start picking up those random things. Like mm -hmm. mine is, I remember you know, crazy ass Boise State on late at night back in their like night, maybe back in the big two thousands. So I'm always sort of a Boise State fan. Like I'm a Hawaii fan because every college football is a Hawaii fan. Fans look like a Hawaii fan because that's the late game sometimes. Yeah, you pick up all sorts of weird shit. Like, that. well, so I don't know if you know Liam, but so Beth and Pit Girl are well, Pit Girl obviously, but they're also both from I don't know. Would you call it Central PA? They're from Central yes. PA, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. So this is just excessively PA today. Especially too. considering that most people's definition of Central PA is not Philly, not Pittsburgh, probably not Erie. Definitely not Erie. I don't know what Erie is. Erie is not own, central. Erie is its own fucking thing. Erie's Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> and then Kamish, even though he's from New Orleans and lives in Texas, what is your pit? What is your Pennsylvania uh, fandom? Okay, so you know, I'm born and raised in in New Orleans, Louisiana. So 
that's weird to begin with. Uh, my dad is from Pittsburgh himself. My mom is from Miami. Uh, my <laughs> that is dad, such, that is such it, a Romeo and Juliet relationship. It, it, okay. So my, my dad left Pittsburgh, uh, went to Dayton for the university of Dayton, because apparently his, yeah, go flyers, baby. Go yeah, flyers. Go flyers. Right. <laughs> Scenic go flyers. Dayton, Ohio, uh, go flyers. Um, uh, and so he went there because his dad had a rule that he had to go to school at least four hours away, four hour drive away from from home. So Not a bad rule. Dayton, uh, there. Uh, uh, as my my mom is from Miami, she grew up in like Hialeah, Florida. So I have like Miami Hurricane fandom there on that side. So I have Dayton fandom, Miami Hurricane fandom. I've been inflicted with Pittsburgh Pirates fandom. That's the uh, one. That's, um, that's the one. Also, there's Penguins fandom because, I mean, too, when being a kid in Louisiana growing up, watching, like, the Pens when they're first back-to-back, because I'm old as hell, uh, mm-hmm. with, like, Lemieux and Yager and shout-out Kevin Stevens. Uh, but, you know, all, all of those guys uh, just – grew up there i I did not get inflicted with steelers fandom because uh i was inflicted with the ain'ts of new orleans (laughs) um in the paper bags jim mora uh, you know mike ditka not uh, the good not the good years no not the good saints years with the with the uh the dueling billy joes at quarterbacks um you know it's, it's never good when you have two billy joes as a quarterback and you rotate them in and out uh Shout out Billy Joe Hobart and Billy Joe Tolliver. Uh, but that that is my fandom. And my dad enforced the rule on me uh, that I had to go to school at least a four-hour drive away from home in New Orleans. Uh, so uh, that's how I wound up in-state in Monroe, Louisiana. Oh, yeah. Uh, and went to Louisiana Monroe because I wanted to be a weatherman. I wanted to be Jim Cantori. Uh, and it was the only school in-state. Uh, that had like atmospheric science in the entire state of Louisiana. You would think the whole state is just atmospheric science, but no, just the northeastern That's corner weird. there. Um, and then, you know, growing up in New Orleans as a kid, I would see like the Green Wave playing in the cavernous Superdome with like 3,000 people in it. And it was a treat because it was just there's, there's Buddy Tevens, there's Mac Brown, there's. You know, like these Tulane legends, of, Mac Brown, gotcha. like like the legends of coaching, but they're here at Tulane. Like, what are you doing here? They're they're here going <laughs> four, they're here going four and nine. They're here, and yeah, for a better I mean, job. Mac Brown being the AD in six and six with his Lego <laughs> Mac Brown hair, but <laughs> just so that's the fandom there. It's weird as hell. I I picked up you know as you say you pick up random fandoms. Um, I I've loved the Akron Zips. For like the longest, yeah, uh, yeah man, you've got, I've, you've got zip fever and it's weird. I have Akron zip, like I'm, I'm. No. Mitch, have you ever been to Akron? No, no, <laughs> don't go. No, I've never been. Like, Destination I've been to Ohio. Like I've been to Cincy, I've been to uh, Columbus and Dayton, and then I've been to. Have uh, I been to Akron? Not, don't, don't visit yeah. Akron. It will kill the romance. <laughs> it, it, you know, Akron. again, I, it, it will it's, kill the romance. You have managed to hit most of the areas of Ohio that are not uh, that are not as aggressively Rust Belt as Akron. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I don't know. That's one of my weird fandoms. And then out west, I, I kind of fell in love with the New Mexico State Aggies when I went to travel there. Um, you know, UTEP out there. Which you're I'm in love with. with. You're in love with anything I, literally I love, west I love, of. <laughs> look. I west love, of like, Lubbock, you're like, I love this. I want to go out west. I, I want to, I mean, Wyoming, thank you so much. You're a crazy football team. Like, you know, just, I just want to go out west. I want to live in big sky country. Uh, just, just, I want to, you know, again, this, this is my uh, commission manifest destiny. There I just go. need to go west. <laughs> I, I do want to talk about a little baseball something. Uh, Liam, were you a band kid? Yeah. What did you play, Liam? Uh, I was in Pitt. Hell yeah, you were. Yeah. Marimba? Yeah. Cool. So what, this... W- what mallet hold were you using? The bad one. The incorrect one. <laughs> uh, there you go. Yep. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I know about. the one. It's, it's all fist and all shoulder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Subscribe to our Patreon and we can you can listen to Jordan and Beth talk so, about additional band nerd shit. So, so, so Beth and I, I'm an ex-band director at this point. Beth is a current band director, musician, 
Pit Girl was in band. Kamish played saxophone for a year, so this is a very band-heavy podcast. I do want to talk about the Miami Marlins originally said they were going to allow any instruments in their stadium. And I'm thinking already, like, oh, shit, okay. I wheel in the marimba. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wheel in the marimba. My, my five, and a half off, five and a half octave marimba right in the front row. Oh, yep. I was I was going to put a Hammond B3 on, like, a pallet and just drag it in and be like, okay, stadium organist, let's go. Uh-huh. Oh, dueling the stadium organist is such a ballsy move. <laughs> This is my contra bassoon. Right, that's, so, so I am a bassoonist, and for me, that is like, yep, I'm going to bring in my fucking contra bassoon. Hell yeah, I'll bring in four of them. And they have now said that there is a list here. It is stuff like uh, congas, a wiro, bongos, claves, a trumpet, tambourine, cowbells, but asterisk. The cowbell percussion instrument is permitted, but additional cowbell styles may be denied entry. That's cowbells. Sorry, Mississippi State fans. Like, that has to be I'm it. I'm not. <laughs> that's that old miss fandom there it is oh. i just want to know who is dragging a full set of congas into a stadium they on clearly, this they they clearly do not know that. yeah I, right i mean this is miami like my mom is from miami this is this is you carry you carry bongos congas yeah. are huge like they are they are way bigger than you think to lug them into a stadium but I can you bring a djembe no i mean look look the this miami is, is, machine is just roving around florida at any time, mm-hmm. and then Gloria Stefan may show up because, again, the rhythm is going to get you at some point. You don't know. You don't know when, but it's going to get I do love the idea of dragging in, like, a set of timpani. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, oh, hell yeah. Oh, my five, yeah, five, oh, five yeah. timpani. Perfect. Yeah. A whole, tra- a whole, I say a whole trap set, but people do that all the time. The other thing was, like, okay, it's a trumpet, and people were like, well, I don't think that someone at the front gate really knows the difference between, like, a trumpet and a mellophone. Okay, so I can get close now. What's the biggest instrument I could bring in? Could I, I bring in a sousaphone and be like, no, it's just a trumpet, man. You could, you could, I trumpet. think you could conceivably bring in a sousaphone, right? Like, Yeah, what are you going to tell me? That's just a trumpet. Yeah, that's... Oh. Especially <laughs> if it's the shoulder holster. So oh, if it's, uh, if it's like the big like, shoulder contrast? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a trumpet. So one of our really nerdy band folks were like, well, so is this a cylindrical bore versus conical bore issue? And then you, know, yeah. you get into like, oh... Can I, could I take my cornet in? Is, is a cornet not a trumpet? When is, oh, it got really... We got in the weeds. Is keyed brass okay? These are things I wonder. This is... I, I know what they want, because they want the same... Miami wants the same vibe they had during... What was it? The, it wasn't the World Series. It was the International Baseball Class, whatever that thing is called. Yeah. They wanted that, like, vibe. And so they're like, okay, I want that vibe. We'll bring all instruments. Ooh, no. I want a very specific vibe. Here are your instruments. Where's your Latin jazz combo? Got it. <laughs> Could you I, sneak in a Vuvuzela as a trumpet? I think they would rip that out of your face. <laughs> Some of them, yeah, like, yeah, they make them good. now that they, like, smush down. I know. You just put like, it in your there's bag, a smush down. Oh, that's worse. <laughs> here's th- okay, so then here's my question. Are they going to be able to tell the difference between a P trumpet and a Vuvuzela? No. And so a I P think- trumpet listener is a PVC-based trumpet. Yeah, people, um, you have the little pea bones too. They're great. Yep. And uh, yeah, see, shout I, out I, to the pea horn, which costs a thousand dollars because some nerds have to have rotary valves. Rotary valves on a PVC instrument. Okay. Anyways, we're getting, we were so in the weeds right now. Holy All shit! Right. <laughs> Back up, push out, push out of this real fast. Okay. You got to make the listeners pay for the band. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the that's our old, that's our only fans. You got to pay for that stuff. Oh <laughs> my before god! You, before you guys were on, I had to change shirts. It was just me and Beth, and I. Turned off the video. <laughs> I turned it back on. I was like, I changed shirts, but you got to pay for it if you want that. <laughs> Charging everyone. You got to monetize, man. Yes. Okay. So actual football news, though. This isn't 100% official yet, but I like this story. So I'm going to say it. It looks like Washington State and Oregon State are going to be on the CW. Yes. God, yes. Why not? Why not? Why not? This is I, the ACC made it work. NC State made it work for them this past season. It wasn't it wasn't a bad broadcast. But, I've sat through some pretty uninspiring broadcasts. I don't have any reason to believe that that this is going to be horrible. Honestly, you went to a Temple game on like a Tuesday night this year. Okay, it was a like, Friday. It was a Friday. sorry. It was a Friday. You're right. It was a, it was <laughs> Friday. It was my birthday, <laughs> and we and we lost fifty five to nothing to SFU. Oh God! <laughs> Happy birthday! Yay! I, forgot it was I, your birthday I was really sad when he missed that field goal in the third quarter. I was like, please, at least there could have been points. <laughs> any, any I was so I was like. Don't miss this. And then he missed it. I was like, oh, my God. 
our, no. our, our <laughs> opener this year is at Oklahoma. Oh, Ooh, yeah. I oh like, no. I'm close to that. Hold up. Yeah, I Let's see. I, I might go to that one. It's Labor Day weekend. I am petitioning my wife to let me go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that's we're a bye game, baby. Yeah. You know what? That's what we get. A, if a... you go as a Temple fan to Norman, you will be on television. Oh, they yeah. will find your ass. <laughs> although, no, although, although the colors are pretty close. You're gonna have to wear a little more cherry color, a little more cherry. Just is, a red, a, is red a good color hat. for you, Liam? Are you a re, are you a good red? I am a good red. I am a good. Oh, red. see, I can. I am not. I got that. Yeah, I have a a, a fantastic uh, crew neck from Home Field, the retro owl. Oh uh, yeah, that yeah, was. Yeah, it looks it looks pretty sick. I would probably wear that and then just watch. I I assume that it's sort of like a you know in the World Cup where a team needs another team to lose and then they buy them drinks for the rest of the day. Yep. I, I feel like uh, I could probably get away with that as a like suffering Temple fan in Norman. Oh yeah, they wouldn't they wouldn't know what to do with you. They'd love you. You are yeah, you're gonna be a curiosity. Like when when exotic birds get blown way off course by strong <laughs> winds. That's you. You're 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 a beautiful plumed crane somewhere in the southwest. Thank you. I was at a Temple Yukon game. A real thing that happens. Yeah, it is. Uh, and uh, there were these the fans visiting from from Connecticut, and they and I was wearing shorts at the Temple tailgate because it was like it was like forty five fifty. It was shorts weather, what? and and uh, a drunk Yukon fan was like, "You're not cold. Let me feel your legs." This was like a mother of three in like her early fifties, and just like <laughs> grabbed my calf and like rubbed it a little bit. I was like, <laughs> "What the fuck are you doing?" Like it's like it's like eleven a.m. and you're at a Temple tailgate. Were you wearing like the standard Pennsylvania uniform of shorts and a hoodie? Yes. Okay. Of course. <laughs> Perfect. See, I, I, my, I figure my... that goes without saying, but the Texans need to hear it from more than just us sometimes. I told you, my wife told me the other day that that was like like twelfth grade dress. I was like, no, there's a whole culture dedicated to shorts and hoodies. I'm just you just don't understand. This is our national dress. Yeah, if we're yeah. not ashamed. We we we. You're the reason we have in America. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I we're gonna go out of America because I want to talk about the NFL global markets thing one more time. Yes, yes. The NFL yeah. has once again decided that some countries need to just you know have entire fandoms. And so I like, the, to, I like the, the sphere of influence James Madison manifest destiny shit the NFL's pulling. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, we're, we're, they're, they're, they're we're carving up the world. We're carving we're, this shit up. They're conquering we every we single get day. The <laughs> Listen, we ca we got to put a PC front on it. You can't call it Empire anymore. You just can't. <laughs> and and they have the understanding of of Empire as Europeans because they went China, Japan, South Korea. Y'all get one team. Y'all are close. You all are similar ish, right? So LA Rams. That's all you. It's fine. We'll give Colombia the Dolphins and Argentina the Dolphins, but you know, one point whatever billion people, you you all get LA. Did they not want to expose Harbaugh to other countries? He was just living in an RV by himself. Like, I know. I love Dude's it. rock. Dude's <laughs> rock. Just, like, did they not? Like, look, they got the the Rams, like, it, Australia, China, Japan, New Zealand, South Korea. And Mexico. And Mexico for some And Mexico. Mm -hmm. But, like, there's no Chargers. Like, there's no international Chargers. You... They, they wanted to keep Harbaugh confined to his... RV. <laughs> you gave RV knows what he's dead. Like, you gave football's most famous milk enthusiast to the most lactose intolerant area of the world, and I don't understand why. I, I think the issue I have here is that why are we? Again, some of these are like just like very why in the world? Switzerland, a, a notoriously like fractured you know, republic society with many cantons has five different teams and i just want to understand how that number was come to like a country of one point whatever billion china one team mm -hmm. switzerland five <laughs> northern ireland you get the steelers but so does ireland because well, yeah, the steelers... yes yes irish, irish reunification, reunification, yeah, yeah. <laughs> irish reunification in our lifetime 
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rudy. <laughs> Through the magic of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Steelers fandom, they're going to come together, shake hands, the border's gone, and they're going to climb light poles when the Steelers win. Listen, Dan Rooney didn't die for our sins so that, I, so that Ireland couldn't reunify. <laughs> the only thing I can think of is, is why the Switzerland has five like, yeah. teams. Uh, um, is because all the owners have like you know those untraceable Swiss bank accounts that they're laundering okay. money through. Yep. So or they're um, really trying to reboot NFL Europe. That, I mean, <laughs> hey, oh, that, that, that's that's still a thing. It's called European League of Football now, yeah, and they still, still have a couple of those teams. Yeah. I assumed that Germany had ten teams because it's going to split into a million countries again, and they're just preparing for that. That could be it. We're we're going to devolve back into that. Then Italy would also need another thousand. Is Italy yeah. not even on here? Does it see the fun of this is going to be where the Carolina Panthers end up getting the Rhineland for about eight seconds? Italy's not on here. I know that's insane. Also, why the fuck are we exporting the Chicago Bears to Spain of all places? The most poor why are we, things. <laughs> why are we? Why are we sending the Browns to Nigeria? <laughs> oh my and god! Nowhere else. The only answers to that are racism. That's the only yeah. answer. <laughs> Oh my god! I, I, I love I, that though. I do want to see uh, an NFL game played in like Lagos. That would fucking roll. Oh, oh yeah, like, with ninety thousand people with no fucking clue what's going on, cheering the loudest you've ever heard in your damn life. Road flares just shooting off in the crowd. <laughs> we don't use road flares enough in the states. I've said this before in here, y'all. More fans need road flares. Um. So, am I to understand that Spain is at the perfect intersection point between Chicago and Miami? That's. I mean. I mean, if you look at the north part of Spain down to the south, yes. Where is that geographically? Somewhere between, t somewhere in Tennessee? Probably. Uh. Spain is Tennessee? Oh, that's... Oh, oh God. Uh. <laughs> Enjoy. Las Fias in Knoxville. <laughs> I love how they have the Falcons in Germany. Because, no, I'm, I'm going to get a huge case of schadenfreude. Uh, <laughs> that 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 was the joke you were aiming I for. I was going for yes. Okay, okay. well, better than the Eagles got there. Was. That's all right. So yeah, well, you'll notice also we're not exploring the Dallas Cowboys because that's America's team. Uh, uh, they, Why not? We're already they're here. In Mexico. Oh, they are in Mexico. Okay, well, we're oh. North America's team. You also mean, notice they didn't give the Bills to Canada. <laughs> yeah, you get, you get nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like 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 the Bills got nothing, and not even the Canada. Which actually, is the... occasionally plays in Canada. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, Canada. you're not Canada. <laughs> no. I I I hope whoever comes up with this list and sits in a room and just like bullshits this is happy. I hope someone's having fun getting paid to do this. I'm excited for the Eagles, who have by far the strongest risk position imaginable. Oh, right give me. Yeah. Like I mean, Ghana is going to get destroyed very quickly, but they're just going to they're just going to turtle on on Oceania and Always. build up armies for days. Jesus. Okay, I'll go to Ghana. So, I don't give a shit. Yeah, <laughs> 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 I have a passport. Let's do this. So tonight, Liam, we're going to do two things. Uh, Beth and Pit Girl have come up with some Pennsylvania city games, I believe, mm -hmm. to help sure us have. learn more about your weird fucking state, well, and then. Good. Well, it's not so Pickerel and I have decided that it, it's not fair that it's just our weird state. So we decided that we, we want to introduce this by talking about what counties of Pennsylvania we're representing. Yes. Okay. So um, for this, for, for Liam, for Pickerel and for me, this is the counties that we have resided in in Pennsylvania. And we have assigned you both counties. OK, cool. So I will be representing Mercer County, Blair County, Bedford County and Philadelphia County. Yeah, we're going to have some overlap. I am representing uh, Lancaster County, Luzerne County, uh, Allegheny County, and Cumberland County. Liam? York and Philadelphia counties. Okay. Um, Kamish, you will be representing Erie County because you are also from a place that tries to make seafood out of baffling things. And if anyone can figure <laughs> out what to do with the zebra mussel, it's someone who's from New Orleans. And we respect that about you. I I've never tried zebra mussels steamed in white wine sauce, but now I'm thinking about it. They're invasive. May yeah, as well. Sure. What is a zebra mussel? Don't they're invasive. Uh, they're in Lake Erie and they're not supposed to be there. I'm, I'm Googling this. Is it safe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Done. You're not going to end up on a list. 
Zebra mussels? You actually, you actually might be in Texas. If you, if you bring zebra mussels in Texas, you will be on a list. So, yeah. yeah. And Pit Girl is going to assign uh, Jordan a, fan, a fandom. Oh, go, go. Uh, yes, Jordan, congratulations. You have been de- been assigned Delaware County, affectionately known as Delco. Okay. Where, where uh, is that? <laughs> that Liam knows what's up. <laughs> you want uh, Delco- You want to go down to Wawa? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, shit. I'm uh, almost in Delaware. Okay. Yes, Del- Delco is. Did you? Did, I assume you are cognizant of the existence of the show Mayor of East Town. Yeah. Did you watch it? Do you no. do you recognize the? Okay, you know about the accent yes, though. That, yes, I do. Yeah. That. Okay. Awesome. That. Yes, you are Philly's dirtbag suburb. You're oh, welcome. hey. Feels correct. Everyone you've ever known has four DUIs. <laughs> All right, so I, you should have a presentation for me now, I think, if I shared my screen the right way. You have not. Oh, oh there it is. Perfect. Okay. All right. There we go. Your drop shadow is so aggressive. Yes. That's how we roll most oh of God. the time. Graphic design is our passion. So do you want me to play sli- a slide tag and you do the introductions, Pit Girl? That's fine. Okay. Um, so we are going to start with... Pennsylvania Pronunciation Hell Part 3. Okay. Um, Liam, th- this is a game that we enjoy torturing the Texans with. You are welcome to play along as well. Hell yeah. um, you're going to know some of these. You might not know all of them. I didn't know all of them, and I am basically a lifelong Pennsylvanian. So... If you know it, just answer last, because it's funny when Jordan and uh, and, and the commission struggle. Yes. Oh, this is, this is always super struggle. Um, I'm, I'm terrified right now. You should be. I am. All right. Who's keeping score? Uh, I am. Sure. Why not? Okay. Thank you, Jordan. All right. So our first, uh, our first city is. Oh, I know this one. I know this one. R e a d i n g. I know this one. It's it's Reading. Uh, Reading. Liam. It's yeah, Reading. Yes, it is. Okay. Yay! All right, we not, started you out with an easy one. Not shut out. I am. That's that's all I want to do is not get shut out. The good times end here. Uh, M a c u n g i e. This is Makungi. Okay. Kamish. That I mean, yeah, that that sounds about right. Makungi. Yeah. Liam. Okay, so I have a little bit of a home field advantage here. Let me get Mackengee. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. Uh, folks, this is Mukunji. Mukunji. Oh, no, it isn't. Okay. No, it isn't. That's not real. No, you can't. <laughs> no, there's, there's no way that G makes that sound. I'm sorry. Yes, do, it does. Do it again. Mukunji. Mukunji. Yes. This is in the, like, greater Allentown that area. Dirty. It sounds like you're saying something awful. It oh, does. yes. Well, I, there is also Upper Makanji. No, no, no. You, have to go to a, you have to go to a lady doctor to do that. So <laughs> let's let's remove a couple letters. And okay. See if this helps. Oh God. T H R O O P. I feel this like is... you would get this if you, in like the 1800s in your you know. Yeah, the thro- you had the throop. <laughs> yeah, the throop. <laughs> this is this is this is true. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Throop. I don't care. I just, <laughs> my, I, you've got the Throoping cough. <laughs> <laughs> just, that's what I'm going with. Liam, Liam? is it this Throop? That would be very Pennsylvania. It is Troop. You are correct. Ooh, Ooh. yes. What the real. fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I, lived the state. I have lived in this state my entire life. All 30 <laughs> years of it. If it's not, I want to be very clear. If it's not in central Pennsylvania or like next to Philly, I have no fucking idea what it is. So this is, this is up by like Jim Thorpe in like that area of Northeastern PA. And we love Nepa. Yeah. This is very Northeastern PA. Why are you like this? (laughs) Is that the part? Is that the part of the PA that also makes the weird... Food too? Is that the smorgasbord part of PA? No, that's, no, no, that's, that's, that's Lancaster that's, County. That's, but that's there funny. is weird Nepa food as well. Okay. If I haven't talked about Boilo, remind me next Christmas and I will. Oh, okay. Put on the list. Oh. Okay. Okay. So W I C O N I S C O. 
It's not Wisconsin. No, it's not. <laughs> My dyslexia. I have dyslexia, you assholes. This is not fair. <laughs> Don't blame us. Blame the Commonwealth. What? There's no Welsh on this one either. If I could spell it Commonwealth, I'd blame them. Uh, this is Wiccan <laughs> Seco. No, 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 no. I, I, I flip letters again. Wiccan this. Okay. This is Wiccansco. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. I, I mean, look. I mean, I, I, I had no idea where to go, and then he, he went there, and I'm like, oh, I, I can see it. <laughs> oh my god, this is no. I, I can't even. I, I, I get to the point in these things where I can't even say it out loud. My head won't. Allow oh me no, to absolutely. Say it. I had the same yeah, problem. I just, uh, I'm just gonna go with Wiko Nisko. Very oh, good. I like that. I had that. I, I like that one. Yeah, uh, it's not real, but the Wiko Nisko. <laughs> what do you think, Liam? The most embarrassing part of this is I know where this is, and yet I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> oh no! It's the I've seen it on a sign. Oh no! Yeah, it's I. I yeah, Dauphin County can fuck itself. Uh, <laughs> yes. Wiko Nisko, give me Wiko Nisko. It, you, Liam, are, you are correct. correct. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there are some of these where if you're from PA, you can look at it and go like, this pronunciation makes no sense to anyone else, but this is what it is. And that's, that's one of them. I just lean into it. All right. S-W-O-Y-E-R-S-V-I-L-L-E. Another hit from NEPA. This is, this is NEPA. 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 This is Sawyersville. Okay. Yeah, that, that kind of seems like, you know, that's, I guess, the easy way to just, just take... Oh, yeah, I took the easy way. Sorry. To, you know, I mean, just take the, the W funny out, enough. you know? Because, I, I mean, that's what I was going to go with, too. I, I'm not saying it wasn't funny. Oh, you, you take... Like here, I, I'll I'll switch it up, then. No, it doesn't matter. No. Okay. I just, no, I, I kind of like you, that After you, sir. One. After, You're oh. like a 90-year-old couple fighting over a coupon. Come <laughs> uh <-huh>. on. <laughs> Are Fine, you sure it. you want to I'm, split the soup and salad? I, I'm going to take, I'm going to take, <laughs> I'll take Sawyersville. Sawyersville. Swoyersville. Sawyersville. Sawyersville. <laughs> yeah, you can have Sawyersville. I'm taking Sawyersville. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. I'll trade you. Sawyersville. <laughs> okay. Leah? <laughs> I fucking hate this game. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah! Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome to my fucking nightmare. Yeah, welcome, me, welcome, Liam. Me, welcome to the podcast. He's never coming so, back. Give me Soresville. Just like run together. Okay. Um. So Kamish is correct. It is Sawyersville. I will tell you, Liam. I have heard that pronunciation for this town before. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give him a point for that one. That yeah, I, uh, count it. This, I, this I kind of want to give Jordan a point because I forced him into change. No, him. fuck that. No. Okay. Are you sure? I don't want your. I mean, I can get the soup. You can get in, the salad. Also, in the, the interest of in the interest of full disclosure, if either Pit Girl or I took this quiz in a vacuum, neither of us would get them all correct. No. I, I assume you both have specific knowledge. This is like the yes. the Coca Cola recipe where each of you has half of it. Speaking Correct. of, E M E I G. -A. Oh God. <laughs> this is this is one that I got wrong. This is Emmy, like the trophy. That, okay. I mean that makes sense. I like that. No, I mean okay. meh. You like that it's, too much? I'll pick something else now. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, just. Emmy is is good, um, but there's there's got to be a weird vowel here somewhere. There always is, buddy. There's got to be a weird <laughs> vowel. Like Emmy just seems, it, it could be right. Emmy could be right, but there's got to be a weird vowel. There's got to be uh, a I hidden mean, vowel in here somewhere. Shake it till the hidden vowel comes out. Hidden vowel. It's wrench. like I'm staring at hidden this word like wrench. it's a magic eye thing. Yeah, I Enough before you be... accept in this word. <laughs> I almost want to go like, oh, no. <laughs> but, <Okay. laughs> uh, I mean, I'm just going to say emig, and the H is silent. Okay. Wait. <laughs> it's... Oh, okay. Go, go, Liam. Go for it. Fuck, give me eem. Just give me eem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to switch mine. I okay. have an awful feeling. Is this Amy? 
It is a. Oh me. my god! <laughs> <laughs> the weird vowel was in the front the whole time. <laughs> oh my god! I looked. I looked at it. And I was like, wait a second. Is this fucking Amy? <laughs> I knew that was a weird vowel. Just couldn't find. Oh. Yeah, this is this is what um, annoying parents are naming their children. Oh god, <laughs> this cool. it does. It looks just like an oboe player I once had. It's like it wasn't that, Amy, but it was close. Three like of my that, neighbors have this as a last name. I I. It's like that. Was that that viral video of the the lady with all the like Lakeland or whatever? Like oh, that yep. name would be yeah. on there, but it's Amy. All oh, right. Okay. So Amy, that was Amy. God. Oh my God! S C H N E C K S V I L L E. Schnecksville? Schnecksville? This is like Dutch, Pennsylvania Dutch almost. It wouldn't be like. I, I'm I'm just gonna say like Schnecksville. Oh, hit the C, hit the C H like a K. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I don't know. It's... I don't know. Did you say, did you say Schnecktville or did you say Schnecktville? Uh, I, I think I went with Schnecktville. Schnecktville, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah, oh, I like that. I, I'm, I like Schnecktville. Okay. Like Louisville. <laughs> this is apparently somewhere in Kentucky. Liam, what do yes. you think? This is where the fucking zoo is. <laughs> <laughs> Shecksville. <laughs> Give me Shecksville. Wrong. This is Schnecksville. This was a trap card. You guys are bad. I don't want to be on this podcast this... anymore. <laughs> what is this? What, what the fuck did you say? Schnecksville? Schnecksville. Schnecksville. It's just, it's just it's pronounced exactly like it's spelled. Oh. I don't oh. see what the problem uh, is. Uh, Liam, Liam, I will happily send you past PowerPoint decks that we have made for this so that you can torture people on your own podcast. Yes, thank mm -hmm. you. Enjoy. You are so welcome. Schnecksville. Not as much as you're about to. <laughs> S A L L A D A S B U R G. Salad Asperg? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a side salad or you want a salad Asperg? <laughs> right. Like <that's... laughs> oh, this is, this has got to be, no. this has got to be like Salatusburg. Salatusburg. Or something like that. I'm going to go Salatusburg. Okay. I'm, I'm just gonna say it, it's Salzburg. I, I like Salzburg. Like Salzburg. That's it. That's what it is. I'm going to Salzburg. I just I have a feeling. I I want to point out too that my dad is from Massachusetts, and confusing town names are like his bread and butter. And yet oh yeah. He will, he will look at a map and be like, "That's not fucking real." And I also feel like <laughs> this is my own state, and this is not fucking real. Liam, I can tell you're from here because you're very close. This is Salzburg. Uh, no, no, Sal, no, no, no. Sal <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, the A's make the noise you want them to. <laughs> <laughs> Sal Deesberg nuts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Arthur, man. when you're editing this, that's the that's the episode title. <laughs> Sal Deesberg nuts. It's Sal Deesberg nuts. Okay, um, that, cut the clip, too, for the YouTube here. Oh, yeah, so, I'll, 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 I'll cut this. <laughs> At least people will know what they're getting into. All right. A R M A G H. This is Amy again. <laughs> <laughs> no way. No, this is this is this is Army. <laughs> I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with that as my answer, Army. I mean that I mean there's there's the, you know, there's the G H at the end. There's gotta be a weird Which vowel. Be pronounced here. one of forty thousand ways. Who knows? Who knows? So, I mean, You're like, assuming e? that those A's aren't a trap, yeah. Oh, it could be okay. it could be Irma. I don't fucking know uh, yeah. anymore. I, I'm I'm gonna call it Irma. Okay. Okay. So here's Leo? my problem. Here's my problem. There's it's presumably named after the town in Ireland, or the north of Ireland. But how how badly did Pennsylvania fuck it up? Right. I will t and I will tell you that this is in the Laurel Highlands. Of course it fuck it is. God damn it. <laughs> I'm going with Arma. It's not, but I'm going with Arma. This is Arma. Oh, yeah, see, yeah, they fucked it up. Good enough. Good enough. No, it up. that is actually shockingly close to the Irish pronunciation. Give me my. This give, is the one we didn't point. fuck up. Give me my point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to give. It, yeah, God. Oh my God. 
It's okay, because Pit Girl has given you this beautiful gift. Nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. T-I-D-I-O-U-T-E. I'm not titty going to titty out. I'm not going to titty out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a trap. The FBI are in titty out. I'm not going there. Jordan, would you believe me if I told you I knew you were going to pronounce it that way? <laughs> yeah. she, she called this when we were putting together the deck the other night. <laughs> You get the same brain sometimes, and it scares yeah. this crap out of me. It's, yeah. We've podcasted too long together. <laughs> Titty out. Titty out. I mean, Janet Jackson was at the Super Bowl. Yeah. Hey, in, 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 Vermont, in Vermont, you can have your titty out, and it's fine, but in New Hampshire, you'll get arrested. Uh, so much for live free or die. I know, you're telling me, man. <laughs> get naked in the other side of the water. It was fucking annoying. <laughs> There's no way I can pronounce this any other way now. <laughs> yeah, I, have poisoned, I have poisoned your well. Have... It is fine. I am crying. Like, I have to... I can't even see. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Titty Out. <laughs> no, I knew you that. would commit to it. Yeah, I'm committing. Final answer. Liam, you got an answer? Yeah, Liam, would you yeah. like to go while Kamish composes himself? <laughs> I would like I would like a curveball. Give me tidy wheat. Ooh. <laughs> like it's like it's French. Yeah. It's like a weird breakfast cereal. I love it. <laughs> tidy that you can Frosted also tidy wheats. <laughs> Miss, do you have anything? Or can you I, I mean, if I can like put myself together and, and try to put a cast with tidy wheat. Just, just <laughs> Oh my god! Oh man! Oh, man. I just—I'm <laughs> just gonna I say when, when, when you know what I'm doing myself right now is I ha I'm just gonna call it to doubt. To doubt. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay, folks, this is titty oot. Titty oot. I was so close. I was titty so close. <laughs> titty oot. <laughs> oh, I'm like a Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> Utah fan over here. I, I didn't know. I did, yeah, I didn't know it was a Canadian city. Okay. <laughs> to the Ute. We threw around the idea of making you guys pronounce SNPJ at some point, but for another edition of this, maybe. Uh, yes. Yeah, so yeah. this this concludes um, the torture of the PA pronunciation game. What's our score, Jordan? Uh, final score is. I think I got Liam one. and I are at three. Commission at two. So oh, Liam I and I are two. winners. Thank oh. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Woo here we go. Not bad at all. All right, folks. We are on to round two of Pennsylvania torture. Oh, God. Um, and I have, those of you who remember the Blue Ball PA episode may remember my failure to do due diligence, or, or due diligence when we played Two Truths and a Lie. Folks, I have actually done my research adequately this time, and I have also slightly changed the rules. Okay. This time it is two lies and you have to find, two-ish, and you have to find the actual Pennsylvania town. Okay. Not Bloomsburg, the only legal town in Pennsylvania. No. One of the weird boroughs that we have listed here. Right, or townships, it... in some cases. Or CDPs, in some cases. I hate this game. <laughs> yes, good. That's the idea. Bring Liam on the podcast. You're like, I hate everything. <laughs> All right. Round one. Which one of these is in Pennsylvania? Frugality, thrift, or tightwad? Uh, tightwad is in PA. Uh, yeah, I think tightwad is in PA. It seems right. Liam? I'm going to lean on the fact that we're a Quaker state and uh, hope that thrift is in Pennsylvania. You are all incorrect. Oh. Fuck this game. <laughs> uh, oh, <God. laughs> Frugality? Frugality is in Cambria County, which is where Johnstown is. Yeah, it's thrift like right is... next door to me. Yes. Thrift is a former municipality in Texas, and Tightwad is in Missouri. That's oh. Missouri. Which does yeah, feel right for Missouri. Thought I had you. Oh. Okay. Round two. Oh. Hospital, asylum, safety harbor. I bet there's an asylum PA. Like some. Yeah, there's got to be. I'm going to say hospital. 
okay, so what pisses me off about this game while I'm, while I'm, while I'm, while I'm here is that there is a safe harbor dam in Pennsylvania, but it's in fucking, like, Chanceford Township. It's not in... Oh, you fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Bravo, the there. Give me... Just give me hospital. Uh, Liam, I may or may not have written this question to specifically target you. That's Thank you. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> but you got me. You are correct. Yeah. The Safe Harbor Dam, also Safe Harbor PA, CDP, is between Lancaster and York Counties. Uh, hospital is in County Limerick. Safety, safety Harbor is in Florida. And Asylum is a township in Bradford County. Give yourself Leading. a point, Got it. Bullshit. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Hey, would you say, a, like, oh. CDP or whatever? What does that mean? Census uh, designated CDP, place. Census yes, dictated it, place. Okay. Designated. Census designated place. Okay, designated so, place. Sorry. For for the real Pennsylvania heads in the in the listening audience. I live in one um, of those. Yes. As you may know, every square inch of the state of Pennsylvania is incorporated. Okay. However, that doesn't mean that everything is like a, t- a town or in Pennsylvania, unless, unless you're Bloomsburg, a borough. Most places are townships, which are pretty big. And then there might be a built up like town center kind of thing inside that. And then okay. the Census Bureau will give that a name and call it a census designated place. Okay. So, so hospital, Hershey, Pennsylvania is a good example. So hospital of is technically in PA, but it's not a town. No, it's, in, it's in County Limerick. Oh. Asylum is a township. So it's okay. one of those like levels of government, but it's not, it's kind of a town and kind of not. Okay. I'm sorry. And hospital yeah. was what again? Hospital's in Ireland. Oh, it's in Ireland. County Limerick, yeah. Okay, cool. Totally different country. All right. Blanket, sheet, pillow. So sheets exist. Sheets. The Z exists. So maybe it's in sheet, PA. Final answer. I, okay, I know it's not in sheet, PA, because I know where the headquarters is. I'm just saying maybe there's a sheet nearby. <laughs> there's a sheets and sheet? Yes, that'd be great. <laughs> it would be. It would be great. A blanket is calling me. I don't know if it's just because it's late at night, but blanket is calling me. I have an unfair advantage here. Uh, it is pillow. Exploit it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Ah. Liam, you are correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Go ahead. I, I think I used to, I used to see a doctor in pillow and I remember seeing the signs and being like, what the fuck is that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Man, I've, yeah. got, I've got to zoom in so far to get Pillow to show up on Google Maps, y'all. Oh, yeah. Pillow is in ass nowhere, northern Dauphin County. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Sheet is in the UK and Blanket is in Texas. Okay. Oh, Maybe that's okay. why it was calling me. It's that's in it. Texas. Pillow is next to some place called the Luxembourg Pet Resort. Mm-hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Nice. All right. Bacon level Hamburg pig. I like bacon level PA. I like bacon. Hamburg is totally a trap here. It feels that way. It does. I mean, I know there's one in Germany, but would is we there... do that? Yes, you would. Okay. <laughs> it's like you're like, would we do that to you? I'm like, yes, you've tortured us already this entire podcast. Uh, but <laughs> pig pa, huh. I like it. No, it doesn't feel right. I guess Hamburg. Uh, I feel like it's the obvious one. I'm going to kick myself if I don't. But, like, bacon level PA? Like, what? I mean, I, I'm looking at, like, you know, the, the threat level thing from... <laughs> 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 the terror level watch list. It's like we're, we're currently at bacon level. Uh, but I'm going Hamburg. I hate Damn. it, but I'm going with it. I, yeah, I'm I'm mad that you stole this because Hamburg is where the Reading Railroad Museum is. Oh, and there you go. I'm, okay. I'm very mad that you've made me think of Berks County. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know these wait, counties. Wait, is that how, is that how you pronounce the train in Monopoly? Yes, yeah, yes. It's Reading yeah. Railroad, bud. It's not oh. the Reading Railroad. With we uh, already the, covered this on LeVar, this episode. LeVar Reading Burton. Railroad. No, I I didn't realize that that Reading was not Reading. <laughs> okay, I learned something today. Cool. Oh boy. Yes. The other the other thing about Hamburg is that it is the home of a Cabela's. 
It is. Oh, it well is. then. I've, I've been to that Cabela's. <laughs> Haven't we all? One of our few Cabela's. I got um, one. Yay. PA does have a scalp level, but it does not have a bacon level. Bacon level is in Alabama, and pig is in Kentucky. That, that, that feels spiritually correct. And now, so, but... Deliverance him? wasn't in Kentucky, right? Ooh. <laughs> And now, and now we take our regularly scheduled turn into weirdly horny Pennsylvania town names. <laughs> um, I found even more of them when I was going through doing research for this. And this is even considering the fact that on the very first episode of Pennsylvania Torture, I already informed you of the existence of Blue Ball and Bird in Hand and Intercourse. Yep. So do with that information what you will. Uh, but anyway, your options are breeding, fertility, and conception. I'm I'm going to go with relig religious like what do you want out of religion here and it is fertility. Fertility is one of those words that people who settle in Pennsylvania want. It's fertility. Okay, I'm in San Antonio and I see conception and I immediately think of conception. Conception, yes. Conception. <laughs> and I would like to think that there is a Spanish town in the middle of Pennsylvania called Conception, so I'm going with that one. This is the state that brought you lay Joes, and you think that we're going to be able to pull that off? Okay. No, you're going to call it Conception, but in my head, it will be Conception. <sighs> lay Joes. Uh huh. It's the Amish again. God damn it! It is fertility <laughs> because it's next to Dutch Wonderland. <laughs> <laughs> As a former Dutch Wonderland employee, I am immensely pleased to inform you you are correct, Liam. <laughs> and also, Jordan, you get a point. It's the, yeah. it's the first <laughs> Wawa. It's the first Wawa you can get to in Pennsylvania. That's uh, that's east of the Susquehanna. Is like right before there, on thirty. I I used to call that the last outpost of civilization when I was visiting my parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's one. In, there's a Wawa in Gap now, but yes, shout out to the Route 30 Wawa. <laughs> there is a, there are rumors flying that um, Wawa is going to put something in Altoona. They're putting one in Middletown. Yeah, it, it's advancing westward. That's I don't called, know like, how I feel about that's it. That's going to be war. Well, I mean, Rudders already put one like three blocks away from the Sheets uh, oh, headquarters. So. Fuck Rudders. Here we go. Oh, I like Rudders. <laughs> I like the Route 30 burger. I want to. I want to feel bad. <laughs> I mean, it's your county. Of course, it's going to make you feel bad. Hell yeah. <laughs> y'all are like, y'all are using words that I know, but not in an order that I recognize them in. But there yes. we go. Welcome to Pennsylvania, America's Balkans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Balkanization of Pennsylvania is going to be a real rough couple years, y'all. <laughs> we can't say we don't deserve it. <laughs> Okay, but like for real. So in primaries for state level offices, they put what county the candidate is from on the ballot here. Yep. And it is very much like folks from Eastern PA don't vote for folks from Western PA and vice versa. Yep. America's wow. Balkans. My, my area is, is always much more likely to vote for somebody from Allegheny or Westmoreland County than they are from any of the mainline or Philly. Mm -hmm. uh, I would rather be dead than vote for anyone from Pittsburgh, so. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're right. Okay, what do we All have? All right. Next up, we have rough and ready, cut and shoot, and beans and bacon. I like cut and shoot. That feels, again, that feels very Puritan, like, oh, we're going to cut and shoot the land. We don't have <laughs> Puritans. <laughs> No, we, no, up here, whatever you have, I don't know. We had Quakers. That they one, do, yeah. I, I, I sure I meant that. I don't know. Big on violence, the Quakers. I, <laughs> Quakers I used, to food, up, baby. I used to fuck up the Quakers and the Shakers. Beans. Two, one, two. one makes oatmeal, the other makes furniture. Yeah. There we go. The Quakers, the Shakers, the candlestick makers. Yeah. <laughs> one, of, one of them dances a lot. I know that. Oh, my God. You ever been to a Quaker steak and lube? It's delicious. <laughs> shout out, Jesus, shout out to Sharon, PA. Hey, yo. Uh, Is it I Quaker State and Lube or Quaker Steak and Lube? Quaker Steak, steak and, and Lube. lube. Okay, so you get Lube and a steak? It was originally named Actually, after it was in a Quaker State refueling station that they, that they put the very first 
Quaker Steak and Lube. Also, Quaker Steak best known for its wings. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Don't ask questions. But you can get oh, a fine. Lubeformis burger. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A Lubeformis burger. Yeah. By the By the way, if you're going to any Quaker Steak that is not the original Quaker Steak, you are making a mistake because the original one has so an speak. all-you-can-eat buffet. Ooh. Uh huh. Ooh. Their burgers called the Lube Burger. Yes. Lube Normus, does, dude. Does what it <laughs> Lube does Normus. Just, okay. Oh, yeah. The sweet potato retreads. Yeah. This this <laughs> menu, y'all. This menu, y'all. Oh, okay. what I, hey, we're, we're putting this to the side because the kids' oh. menu is called the Kid Lube Cruisers, and I just don't want to go to that. <laughs> I don't want to talk about Lube Cruisers. We're fine. Oh, we're gonna end up on a list. <laughs> no, well, well, shit. Oh my god! I'm going rough and ready. <laughs> you know, the opposite of the stick and loop. <laughs> I am. I am also going rough and ready, and I have a, a trick up my sleeve, which is that I once had to give a presentation in the fourth grade on unusual place names in Pennsylvania. There you go. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Liam is correct, and Kamish also correct. Rough and Ready is in Schuylkill County. There's also one in California, but I'd be willing to make you about the one in Pennsylvania existed first. Yeah. Uh, uh, cut and Shoot is in Texas, well, and Beans and Bacon is a mine in the United Kingdom. <laughs> a yeah, mine with, I'm guessing, over 100 bodies attached to it somewhere. Cut, cut and Shoot definitely felt like, oh my god, the slide, I'm, the, I'm done already. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you changed the slide, Beth, and I'm done. But I, I, I can't even complete my thought now. Uh, uh, listener, this slide reads, Manly Hot Springs, Man's Choice, Ass a Woman. This is... I, I gotta mute myself. <laughs> I, I'm gonna go with... I'm gonna go with Man's Choice. I don't know why. It feels correct. Well, that's one man's choice. Manly Hot Springs feels like it's in Arkansas. I don't know why. It just does. Uh, it's in Ozarks. And and, and Ask Woman? You probably don't. I'm, I'm going with it. You know, again, it's kind of close to New York. And, uh, you know, you get here and you're like, that's a woman. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with that one. <laughs> uh, give me Man's Choice. Correct. Man's choice is in Bedford County. Yep. Not that far off the turnpike. Manly Hot Springs is in Alaska, but okay. I respect thinking that it would be in Arkansas. It does feel like it should be in Arkansas. Yeah, there needs and to be Asshole some Woman's sort of... in Virginia. Asshole I hope it's close to Assateague. I, I mean, you know, Asshole Woman is for lovers. Yep. Shout out to Man's Choice, home of the Coral Caverns. Are we close to the ocean around here? No. Yeah. So what's what's Coral about them? I've never been able to figure it out. If you want, I'll drive there tomorrow and see if I can discover it. <laughs> Why would you do that? This one has four options, just because I, I found too many good ones. Only one of them is in Pennsylvania. Duck, chinchilla, chinchilla, gecko, hippo. I like ge ge gecko PA. Gecko PA sounds like a superhero. Or a physician's assistant. I'm not sure which. <laughs> uh, really, are, are all PA superheroes really? For for uh, real job reasons, I cannot pick the gecko. Um, <laughs> and then uh, again, I cannot pick the duck. Uh, so I I don't know why. Like chinchilla PA feels feels real. Also hippo PA. Just hippo PA feels... has a nice has a nice bit of like. Hippo, Hippo, Pennsylvania. But it's probably not, uh, you know. Uh, I'm going to go with Chinchilla PA because there's some fancy lads wearing Chinchilla coats in PA. It's, it's, I don't know, man. Uh, so I'm going to say, I'm going to rule out duck because there's a duck North Carolina. Uh, there could be a duck PA. I don't like geckos and hippos doesn't make any fucking sense. So I guess give me chinchilla. Chinchilla is correct. Why are you fucking hey. kidding me? I hate this. Chinchilla uh, is in Lackawanna no, County, which is in the that's general vicinity real. of Scranton. That's There's not no real. way. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is bullshit Northeast PA. Yeah, correct. This is yes. insane. <laughs> and, and we found out a little bit about chinchilla PA. 
We did. Chinchilla was, and I have to look it up because I posted it in the, the chat that I have with Beth that we used to plan this. Uh, but Chinchilla used to be named something else. And then it changed its name because uh, per Wikipedia, it was known as Leech's Flats until supposedly renamed by a female postmaster in the 1880s after her chinchilla fur shawl. <laughs> the state of fancy, fancy, fancy lads. It should have been just fancy name shit anything. You just name it anything. I'm wearing sneakers today. This is Sneakers, Pennsylvania. We probably have one of those. And the, be the best thing about it is I can't tell if the town decided to change the name or this person who's the postmaster is just like, I'm just going to fill out the form this way. The also, you can I am, do whatever you want. Yeah, hey, you leave, I'm, leave town, change your name. Back then, you could do any of that shit. I'm also about to drop a very delightful postcard of sorts from Chinchilla in the chat. Um, Liam, I will DM it to you. Thank you. Uh, because I think you all need to see it. Liam is correct. Duck is in North Carolina. Gecko mm -hmm. is in Louisiana, Kamish. That makes, that makes sense. And Hippo is in Kentucky. Okay, that's an adorable greeting card. Gecko, Louisiana, really? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I'm gonna have to look that up because mm -hmm. I have never heard of. It, Gecko it probably Louisiana. is. Not, it probably isn't pronounced that way. It's probably. It's probably spelled G E A U X K C. It is an unincorporated <laughs> community in Saint Martin Parish, uh, located less than two miles northwest of Bro Bridge, um, and then southwest of uh, Cecilia on Bayou Tesh. I have never heard of this place. I must dig further. So our last one is uh, naturally, since this is, I think, number eight, uh, we've centered it around the number seven because mm -hmm. it's Pennsylvania and it makes the right amount of sense. So it is seven devils, seven persons, or seven valleys. Now you see if there were seven springs, I, I knew that one. Yeah, that's, that's like a, seven, seven Springs. That's I like know a, that one too. That's like a resort or something. I'm like so town. glad that we didn't choose that one because okay. that was in our like final. Okay, first. that's good. I that's the one place I've actually went skiing, and I could not turn right. I I like <laughs> the idea. I like the idea. That's car skiing. That yes, I can only go left. Home to a, a skiing engineering disaster because the lift fell once. Hell yeah! Oh Jesus! I I'm gonna go with seven devils. Again, more religious folks that are like, there's devils over there. <laughs> you can be the religious folks. There's seven persons over there. I don't know them. And they won't come over here. <laughs> is, I'm going to go, look, look, there's a lot of hills. There's a lot of rivers. You know, you're in the Appalachians. Let's go with seven valleys. It's not a hidden valley. It's seven valleys. It is seven valleys. And yeah. my high school prom date lived in Seven Valleys. <laughs> wow. And we drove from prom, which we had to vacate because they were doing fight night at the Valencia Ballroom immediately after prom. <laughs> and I had to go to her house where she changed. And then we went to post prom at my high school and we listened to Taylor Swift's Fearless the entire time. It is Seven Valleys. <laughs> Yep, all of this tracks. Oh, man. All of this you tracks. Are, you were having flat. These are these are like flashbacks on flashbacks. Yeah, these are them. deep. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna like go back to the Gecko, Louisiana. So I've I've zoomed in on Gecko. Uh oh. Um, and it is it is right on Girl Scout Road. What? Right next to Glenda's Creole Kitchen. Yeah, I bet you know that Joe, shit's good. Joe Biff's Burgers and Beer. Oh hell yeah. And it's uh, next to Acker Blacktop Paving and Olest, <laughs> Olest Tozan Road. Okay. Right on the bayou. Um, I'll, I'll record uh, the ads later on. Let's go okay. on to the second part. So, Jordan, we, can we get a final score update? Before oh, yes. We sorry. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, final score update between two rounds. Uh, Liam has crushed us with seven points. I have yeah. five. Kamish has four. All right. Oh, I didn't disgrace my state. No, you did I not. Four, right? I got four? Yeah, you got four. Okay. Thank you for joining us for Pennsylvania Palooza. Woo. Hey, folks. Producer Arthur here. Um, if you can believe it, Jordan did not get around to recording 
this little bit here, or if he did, he never got around to sending it to me. I figured it would be easier for me to just record it rather than reaching out and having to wait and all that. Um, and also, if I'm just going to record this, it means that you know, I can probably do some voices and no one's going to yell at me till this episode is already posted. And at that point, like, I'm not going to go back and fix it. So, yeah, let's do this. Okay, first up, we have seven coffee roasters. Um, that is if you like coffee, which I'm not a coffee drinker, but uh, coffee drinkers have told me that it is very good. Uh, you can use our link, I believe. We'll tweet out. Uh, on our Twitter, or go on our link tree. You'll find the link for that there. Uh, we have Bearded Brothers. That is organic vegan energy bars, uh, like protein stuff. Um, again, I'm not that healthy, but I've heard good things from people that are healthy. Um, we have uh, cola goodies. Um, so like chai tea, milk latte, that sort of thing. Um, and those, I think, are also links that we have on our Twitter. Um, find it there, click the link, and then you can buy stuff, and you know that is good for you, good for us. Um, then we have uh, Pour More, which is a liquor subscription. Um, finally, something that I could actually use, um, and uh, you too can use this. If you use code yes ha 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 yes for five percent off your first order, cannot ship to Utah, Mississippi, Alabama, Massachusetts, Tennessee, Hawaii, Michigan, or South Dakota. But if you're outside of those states, you're good. You can get a liquor subscription where you basically get either every month or every other month, depending on, you know, how fast you go through stuff. Um, you can subscribe to specific uh, kinds of liquor, right? Like you could get like a tequila subscription or or you could get uh, they have a bartender subscription where it's more of an assortment. If you're just exploring, you don't really know what you like. That's a cool way to maybe try something new, figure out your palate a little bit better. Okay, next up we have the Patreon. Got to tell you about the Patreon, right? Um, so one of the things, if you subscribe to the Patreon, you can join our Discord, which if you are not familiar with Discord, it's basically like a big messaging app. You go in, you can chat with us. We've got all sorts of things happening. You know, I know it's the college football off season, but like we're still going strong. Got people talking about all sorts of stuff, food, uh, like movies, anything you could think about. Probably there's there probably somebody talking about it up in there. Um, yeah, that's that's a great place to hang out um, if you're trying to avoid getting work done. So um, yeah, uh, then also. On our Patreon, we have our special podcasts. So we have um, there's there's one that Kamish is doing um, with Blue from the Feed Your Mascot podcast um, about Prairie View A and M and how they had a legendarily long losing streak. Um, and then. Jordan and Beth are doing one about uh, some band stuff. I don't know. I did marching band in high school, but uh, you know those two take it to a whole nother level. And you can find that whole nother level on the Patreon. Uh, you know, get the podcast there. Um, and then we also have Substack. Um, so you know, we're putting out written content there. Uh, if you're a Patreon subscriber, then you get access to all of the Substack posts that are behind the paywall. Um, you can also subscribe directly on Substack. Um, that doesn't have the Discord. So if you just say like, oh, I don't want Discord, then you could just subscribe to Substack. Um, and either way, you get the written content and the special podcasts that are behind the paywall. Uh, we also have our merch store. Um, so you can, again, find that link. Just go to our Twitter, find our link tree. Like, all our links are there. 
Um, that's easier than me reading out some URL for you to type in. Um, we've got a lot of stuff in there right now. We're currently um, running you know, a sale through March Madness. And at the end of March Madness, we're going to take the store down for a little bit, do a refresh, and then a relaunch. So if you want something, that, like no guarantees if there's something in the store now that it's going to be there later. So you should just get it there now and, and buy everything. Um, we have YouTube, uh, you know, we really want subscribers there, go watch our videos. Um, you know, we got to get those numbers up so we can get, uh, like into the YouTube stuff where they give us money type thing. Um, that's super important. You know, we want to, we want to do that. Uh, we want to continue bringing, you know, even better, video content so so check out our youtube um and we also have instagram i'm not super I, like i'm not instagram literate but we're on there um we're posting well someone's posting not me i don't know i don't know about that stuff um uh let's see what else we got oh shout out to the message board geniuses podcast uh you know the message board geniuses they're going to the places that we refuse to go because it's just it's, you gotta you gotta wear protection if you're gonna go on a lot of message boards. Um, you know, there's there's some crazy stuff people are talking about there. Um, you know, like there's the really unhinged stuff, but then there's also just so many things where it, like people just have no concept of uh, how like college sports work or something, right? Like you'll just see someone post like. Yeah, like when's the trade deadline? And it's like, like is this a college football? There's no trade. Like that's not how this works. But I don't know. Like it's it's crazy stuff, and that'll turn my brain to mush. So I don't go look at it. But the message board geniuses, they do. So shout out to them. Um. Uh. Yeah, I already mentioned the Substack, but I guess I'm, I'm supposed to mention a couple of the segments that we have going on. The best season of all time for schools who stopped having a football team. Um, so that's one that we've got going right now. Um, we're bringing you the stories about defunct teams and, and their greatest highlights before they just closed up shop. I mean, hopefully they had enough success that they were like, okay, we've, we've done everything we came here to do. We've accomplished our goal and, and now we're good. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, uh, hopefully what happened, um, uh, for a lot of these teams. Um, and then last but not least, I uh, obviously want to give a big special shout out to Home Field Apparel. You can use code YES, ha ha ha, YES, that's three ha's, for 15% off your first purchase from Home Field. Uh, and then we also are doing a, uh, uh, what's it called, um, it, we're doing a thing right now. There's a basketball tournament happening and we're doing some stuff along there um, where we have the Sickos Sneaky 16 spoiler squads. So we have like a hand-picked specialty cur uh, curated, right? That's a word, collection for you. You just have to go again, just like, just honestly, just go to our like link tree. Like you just find all our links there. Um, go to our Twitter. We tweet out those links. Um, and we've curated these shirts specifically for you so that you can look trendy as your bracket gets everything right. And then you can wear the shirt of the teams that are getting everything right for you. So how about that? Um, you know, that sounds like a pretty, pretty good time. If you ask me getting all your March Madness, right? So, um, yeah, I think that's everything. Um, you know, I feel like the outline we have for this is a little out of date. Like there's still a bunch of stuff from during the college football season in this rundown. Um, but I think I hit everything. So let's go back to the podcast and uh, yeah, just get right back into it. I mean, it, Hey, what do you think? Right. It's been a pretty good episode so far. I think it's going to be a good second half as well. Um, so yeah, let's get to that right now. So, I figured that because, because we would have a West Virginia fan, Beth. Oh, my a, God. You got a, the fucking template. I got the template. A <laughs> fan. We are. Fan. Got the <laughs> and, yes. and a general 
Philly sports fan, Liam. I want to I mean, talk about. I love Liam's combo. I just want to say that he's got a oh, dragon, yes. he's got an owl, and he has a knight. So I'm just imagining. Have his, you ever climbed his... a statue, Liam? I have to know. Have I ever climbed a statue? Yes. The, the dragon statue. <laughs> yeah. A, dra a Drexel. I I've been drunk at Drexel University before. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. I used to work at 34th and Market, um, down in the Science Center. Sure. And at the only time I ever decided to climb the statue was when I was eight months pregnant, and I couldn't <laughs> get back bold, off. Bold, bold choice. That's amazing. That's stellar. Y'all, because we have so many fans from teams around Pennsylvania. For our series of worst season of all time for teams who are above 600 all time, I have chosen Penn State. And as their reactions have said, I downloaded the Penn State PowerPoint template. So we'll be using that to go through this. Point of order. Yeah. Is this the stock font for the Penn State PowerPoint it is. template? I hate it. It is. It's bad. <laughs> oh, God. It's bad. Yeah. This is real bad. They tried to lock this behind administration passwords. But like their liberal arts college just posted it just fine. <laughs> I assumed that you just typed in password and it worked. So that, that also the blues don't match, and I hate no, that they don't. Too. They don't match. It's really annoying. Penn State, your graphic design sucks. So and you Liam, also didn't cure polio. No, that's right. <laughs> so what we do here, Liam, is that we try to like go through and remind team. Last year we did the best seasons of all time for the worst teams of all time. Sure. So we were like, let's find that beautiful bit. This year, it's a little more like memento mori. Like, no matter how good things might be, you had a bottom, and you can return to the bottom again. You could just and, say 11 and 2 every year for the rest of time. Uh-huh. And Penn State in 31, this was their rock bottom. So what happened before 31? I got Coach Hugo Bezdek. He's Czech. He was born in Bohemia. He plays football at Chicago, University of, and then has a wacky head coach career where he's head coach at Arkansas, Oregon, Penn State, the Cleveland Rams, and then one year at Delaware Valley. Delaware? He's also, yeah, he's also AD at Penn State through 36. After he gets fired as coach? He doesn't get fired. He just oh, like, yeah. decides to retire it. Stops? Okay. He was also basketball coach for Oregon while he was there and interim basketball coach at Penn State for a year and also baseball coach at Penn State for 10 years and was the coach of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Nice. While he was, it all. Yeah, between Oregon and Penn State, he coached the Pirates. This man did a lot of things. Uh, he also had a pretty good career at Penn State, 65-30 and 11 overall with a one Rose Bowl loss, two undefeated seasons. Like, this is, he was there from 1918 to 1929. Like, this is pretty good. Um... So then what happened? Well, first off, here's a picture of Coach Bezdek uh, shaking hands with the what first Nittany Lion mascot. Why does it look so scared? Uh, <laughs> Why is it tiny? <laughs> so the Nittany Lion mascot used to actually act like a lion. So it would get on all fours and like shake paws and things like that. What the fuck? It's stupid. <laughs> God, we love this shit. He looks like, he looks like if the lion from Wizard of Oz... We're just bad. We're I, way worse. I thought sad Yukon Husky was pretty bad. This is something this, else. Oh, cursed mascot me, pictures just forever. That's, what was the was, what was the thing that the the uh, uh, in the never ending story they would fly on? Oh uh, yes. Falcor? yeah, Falcor. Falcor, like right? Yeah. But it's like a miniature Falcor that has like it, that's just sad. This thing <laughs> looks like it like it was the lion from Mary Martin's Peter Pan, and I am haunted. <laughs> It's kind and, of and also notice coach rocking the sh the pants tucked into the socks into the loafers. Got to do it. A real sharp look there. So coach It's the forerunner to the shorts and hoodie look. So this goes up into 1930. And then 31, here's our season. Uh they end up dropping all but two games. Woo! Really Temple University. So this was the triple threat year. I chose it for a reason because they lost to Temple, Pitt and West Virginia in the same year. Get wrecked. <laughs> Hell yes. They only win one game against Lebanon Valley. And the last game actually is not a regular season game. It was a promo game slash charity game for homelessness. And so they played Lehigh and blew them out. But no, th that was a practice game, basically. So we're not counting that. 
So this is a one-win Penn State game. One-win Penn State season. I also want to notice, I took a lot of this from their yearbook. Their yearbook had an Egyptian theme in 1932. Oh, boy. And the picture there was what they used for football. It is someone who looks vaguely Egyptian in, like, a three-point stance. Sure. Yep. Yeah. So the teams they do lose to this year are Waynesburg, Temple, Dickinson. There you go, Beth. Got that one for you, too. Syracuse, Pitt, Colgate, Lafayette, and West Virginia. It is a bad year. Uh, notice 20,000 people showed up at Temple to uh, watch Temple blow out Penn State. And also, this was the first time they ever played. <laughs> this season is, a, like many of the seasons we cover here, it's a lot of, and this thing hasn't happened for 30 years, or, and this is the first time it ever happened. The team. I'll let you pick which of these sickly children are going to fight. Does this uh, say these are kids that were co- Does this say Hitler? Top left. I, Does this say Hitler? Uh, oh, I think it's just Hitler. Hitler. Okay. Hitler. Hitler. Okay. Yeah, Hitler. it's it's okay. it's old it's old Adolphus Hitler. No one knows what happened. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it, I think in 31 Hitler was either still in prison or just coming out of it. So, yeah. Or possibly in state college, who can who knows? Oh, yeah, who or can possibly in state college, who can tell? Who can tell? These, these young men look like they have come back from World War One. Most of them probably had. <laughs> and uh, definitely has Depression-era vibes here, y'all. A lot of the school newspaper in 31 was like, Depression? What Depression? Things are going great. I don't understand why people are all why people are having money trouble around this country. It was very, like, left the meat cake. Their coach was Bob. We got a Bob Higgins. Y'all will also notice in the 47 staff, because he's still there at 40, in 47. Uh, notice the second name on that staff, y'all. No. Al Michaels. Yeah, Al Michaels at Penn State in 47. What? That's not... Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. Wait. No, it's not It's not that Al Michaels. Now. Okay. I was like, he All can't right. be that old, surely. No, <laughs> no I, was, I was just hoping because that, that felt very weird. Okay, uh, I was like, well, hold on. It's not that one, right? No, he was there for a long time. He played at Penn State and played for the Canton Bulldogs. But he was the head coach at Virginia, West Virginia Wesleyan okay, for a long time. Cannon. Yeah, and then was head coach at Washington University St. Louis and then became head coach at Penn State. Was head coach at Penn State for a long time, 18 years. He was just at the beginning of his tenure. Also, the brother of Margaret Sanger. Boy. Ooh. Like, that, what a weird connection. But yes, her, her uh, main name is Margaret uh, Higgins. There you go. Multitude multitudes. Let me tell you. Uh, that we- okay. weird, weird fucking family dinners, I'm guessing. Real weird family dinner. <laughs> Christmas dinner has been really weird. Uh, he, overall, he was 123, 83, and 16 at Penn State and is widely regarded as a pretty good coach. 1 0 and 1 in bowls, but bowls weren't as common back then. Uh, let's talk about the season. And part of the, I do this, it's I love reading the college newspapers because you get a real vibe from what they were thinking about then. And we have some new freshman restrictions for 1931. For the freshmen, do not go without coats at any time. Do not use the front campus walk or sit on the wall. Do not walk on grass or where grass ought to be. That's what? Where grass ought to be is very central PA in winter. Yes. <laughs> grass should have been there. You should not be there. <laughs> the, gra- the, the brown patch where the grass was, you still can't walk there. Never be without your dink. Or a plain black tie. We're back to dinks again. If you, Listeners, if you don't know, dinks are like, they were sort of like old propeller caps. When you yeah, think of like freshmen wearing beanies, yeah. yes, that's a dink. I so remember freshmen that used to have to wear from those. the Temple episode that we did. The best oh, that's right. Time for Temple. That was right. It was, like, it was, it was called Wear Your Dinks, freshmen. Dink Frosh. Yeah. I was, that was the Temple episode, which I think the well, Temple was like 45, best season of all time, I think. Uh, never right. be without black socks or black golf hose at those times when you were required to wear your dinks. Never use tobacco in public. Never talk back to upperclassmen. Uh, wear no vaping a regu- allowed. No vaping. Wear a regulation card with your name and preparatory or high school printed on it in large letters. Do not appear without it the first two weeks of your college. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what? What's Wear your name tag, nerd. <laughs> Wear your name tag, freshman. Uh, Show me. We'll, we'll get to more freshman hazing because this was Show a year. Show me your papers, freshman. <laughs> when they had to change some of the freshman hazing because in 1931 they thought it got gotten too extreme. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, do not be absent from any class, athletic event, or meeting. Do not leave any event unless excused by the proper authorities. 
Do not associate with young women within three miles of Old Main, except at regular house parties or authorized dances. Three miles. Three miles. You know what three was miles. within three miles of Old Main in 1931? Absolutely fucking nothing. <laughs> Never be without matches with which to supply upperclassmen upon request. As, as a frat kid, I had to carry a pledge pack, and I did have to carry around a lighter and beef jerky, and I forget what else I had in there. Yeah, beef pack. jerky? What? Yeah, because so, someone always wants yeah, someone always wants beef jerky. Okay, and, that's fine. Uh, do not enter South Liberal Arts Building except by the lower entrance. Do not enter North Liberal Arts Building except by the rear entrance. So we have some new rules we're going through. Uh, a little more interlude. Preseason hype. Coach Bob Higgins molds Lion Grid Team, prepares speedy, deceptive machine. Nittany Mentor changes system, introduces military huddle. Return of Collins strengthens backfield. So they have something called the military huddle, which I have no clue what that is, that was popularized by the, uh, at New York University, which tells you how long ago that was. The 1931 squad, facing a schedule as difficult as almost any team in the East, is composed entirely of men who receive absolutely no financial assistance from the college for their services on the gridiron since they had just shifted over to making sure there was no scholarships for players. And a lot of the season, if you read through it, all the opinion pieces are like, well, we lost the right way. We are not paying our players. We lost the right way. And so we can be very proud of that. Oh yeah. God, it's embryonic success with honor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, 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 thinking, I'm thinking like the military huddle. It's, it's either like they're all like in a single file line holding up a four for Jim Harbaugh. Oh, yeah. Um, or they are in like formation, like marching. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Formation. Yeah. So I, I don't, I, that's the only two things that I can think of the military huddle. So I just, he, that's weird. I need to dig further on that one. So Coach Huggins basically only has six returning lettermen. So six players that played last year. He has a couple of sophomores coming up but they're going to have to rely on deception and speed to balance the lack of weight. Liam, one of the things we've learned by reading these old articles is that before 1950, the only measurement we had of stats was how heavy someone was. So a lot of these are like, oh, this team is fat. That's all you know. (laughs) They got a bunch of beef. That's all all you know is how fat the team is. Maybe a corn beef. Yeah. They got the beef. Yeah. The beans and bacon are actually in Pennsylvania. (laughs) So immediately off the back, injuries, in practice, boom. We lose two of their linemen at the same spot. They're both playing guard. Lose them. Done for the season. Out. Uh, they have brothers playing, trying to both be quarterback. Bob and Andy Snyder are position, are basically competing for the same position. This is like and, a dueling Billy Joes. It's great. And he's, and he's holding, uh, Coach Bob is holding practice under the lights in 1931. Because they're like, we got to keep going. We can't let this drop down. We don't want to lose. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And they're still getting hurt. Interlude part two. Quote, for two years, Penn State has existed as a no bulletin board campus. Meetings have continued. Notices should have been posted, but there was no sustainable vantage point for which to post them. It is obvious that a great many unsightly bulletin boards would be detrimental to campus beauty, but there should be at least one. One solution to Penn State's problem of posting... Notices might be a large, attractively designed board with a glass case in which notices could be posted. The student union could supervise the placing of notes, and all publicity for the board would be submitted there. Certainly no objection on the grounds of unsightliness could be made, and the need for such convenience remains great. This was in the newspaper. We need a message board. Yep, we need a bulletin board. Not one of the ugly ones, though. No, 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 no. 1930s message board geniuses. (laughs) That's what they're asking for. And you thought me this team fucking me sucks. <laughs> this team fucking sucks. No one fucking cares. Stop. <laughs> so it said food. Stop. <laughs> Please. My family is hungry. Stop. <laughs> Michigan sucks. Stop. <laughs> <sighs> so yeah, they had a, they had a big, this this debate went on for a couple more uh, issues of the newspaper as to whether to have a bulletin board or not. Truly the trying thing of our times. When, I think I've said it before, but my favorite thing on to, when I'm doing this research, especially around World War II, is that whenever you get to the attack on Pearl Harbor, like 1941, all the student newspapers are like, student fees raised, biggest headline, top font, next one down, slightly smaller, Japan attacks the United States, plunges into <laughs> war, question mark? 
Never change. So, so whenever you whenever you were like in college and you're thinking, man, my student paper was just covering bullshit. It's always just covered bullshit. The <laughs> world is secondary. Okay, Waynesburg. Game one. Waynesburg seven, Penn State zero. Nittany defense falls before air attack of jackets. Hey girl, will you tell me what the air attack consisted of by the jackets? <laughs> I will. Waynesburg attempted 11 passes, of which they completed six, and of which one was intercepted. They gained 120 yards. That was the dynamic uh, air attack of the Jackets that took out Penn State 7-0. to It was never going to be good, but it didn't have to be this bad. Uh, Waynesburg basically just threw over them and didn't have to do a whole lot because Penn State fumbled twice and threw one of their own interceptions. Just could do nothing. This is when they were like, "Uh uh-oh, this is bad. Because Waynesburg is not. This is the warm-up game. Yep. And and it's bad. You got a shot from the game there, from the yearbook. The beautiful white, all-white ref outfits. Because we hadn't gone to stripes yet. No. They hadn't invented stripes yet. No, no, stripes are not allowed. Okay, where do we go from there? Lebanon Valley. Okay. Penn State wins this one. Penn State 19, Lebanon Valley 6. The captain, Lasix, scores three touchdowns in first victory, finishing a spirited attack under the leadership of Captain Judy Lanch, who accounted for three line touchdowns. Penn State set back Lebanon Valley by a 19-6 count on New Beaver Field Saturday afternoon. Can we take a moment to appreciate the number of passes attempted by Penn State? For this Jesus. time, that's so many. Oh, oh my, my God. God. That is so many. So, so through, attempted 27, completed seven, Ooh, had two bad. intercepted. <laughs> Seven for 27. I'm going to say it's nine for 27 because two of those went to someone. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. the wrong team. <laughs> nine. I mean, that's 25% essentially. <laughs> so Penn, State, Penn State's looking at this and going, oh, no, go like, back. How many seven. yards did they gain by passing? 102. <laughs> 102 on seven that's passes. Not that's not bad. Not uh, Lebanon, not Val- good. Lebanon Valley also fumbled four times, four times which led to this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this is we get stats for these games. And and Penn State fumbled four times and threw a pick. Yeah. Yes. Five turnovers. Oh yeah. And the the newspaper's like, maybe this is where it turns around, guys. Like this is a we got right. This is our get right game. We're going to Temple for the first time ever next week. Well, the prelude to, to the game. <laughs> what are we gonna do? How, oh. If you're in State College, how are you gonna listen to the game? Well, if you go to the auditorium between 1 30 and 4 30. They're going to basically put the phone next to a speaker and have someone call the game from the press box in Philadelphia. And they're going to have one of our favorite things, guys, the electric grid graph. Yes. And so listeners, we talked about this a little bit last year, but if you don't know the way they used to show games on away games before television or radio even was that they would have a giant grid that looked like it had like spots for the ball and what down it was and what kind of play it was. And Lots of wires, and someone would just flip switches. It looked like a giant fucking fire. I think Oregon State looked like it was going to blow up. I think that's what yeah, we saw. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was, these I, things are ridiculous. I've always wondered how many auditoriums burned to the ground because of these, because it's all knob and tube. That's. <laughs> that's tough. I just I I love envisioning this as like a gi- giant size of the like handheld football games mm-hmm. from the like late eighties, early nineties. The light just moves. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, it's it's Tiger Electronics is shit. Can you imagine the sound of this thing? I was gonna say, being you know how, how it's just loud hum. this is. Yeah, it's just like that, that, that B, that B natural <laughs> electric. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh god, what? So we put our audience in hell. <laughs> no way. And, sorry, sorry, folks. So yeah, they they are they're gonna basically. By means of an amplifier placed on stage, every game played away from home this year will be presented by a large scale. Uh, by the largest scale thing that was ever attempted here. I'm going to tell you that's not true. Because at some point, this stuff's working, and I don't know why. Uh, they actually asked the former Penn coach, who had become a football writer, what was going to happen with the game. And he says it's a toss-up. The better quote from that former Penn coach is this. Prefer old job of molding football teams to newspaper reporting, declares sports writer. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he's done. Prelude to the game. That's Nick Saban coming up this year. 
According mm-hmm. to the weight chart posted on the wall of Temple University locker room, the average weight of the entire squad is 186 pounds, six pounds more. Oh, while that's the, not good. That's while, not the, good. while the medium height of the group is slightly over 5'10". <laughs> Short Kings. I mean... What do you mean nutrition changed football? <laughs> yeah, just having yeah. enough calories. It's amazing what happens when you have enough calories. I mean... You, you too know. can weigh 360 pounds and somehow run a 4 three forty. Uh-huh. <laughs> that shit is fucking terrifying. I, like, like this stuff, like this stuff like this, like you read these things for these football and, and I just want to hate on Babe Ruth so much. I was like, Look, Babe Ruth, Babe Ruth I, is not doing anything nowadays. He is if I know out. nothing about the Great Depression, I know it created a whole bunch of heavy people. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Yeah, totally. The, the cigarettes helped. I will. I will say the the cigarettes absolutely helped on this. Uh, <laughs> John so, Cruck would be wrecking the crap out of people back in these days. <laughs> as a running you back, just, can you just imagine letting one current college player loose in a game like this. Oh my God, Derrick Henry would kill an entire squad. Heck with that! Put like a <laughs> player on there. Yeah, right. Like just would destroy bodies. Uh, I will say <laughs> oh my that. God. We're talking about norm, no moral victories here. This is from the newspaper, again, the editorial. For many years in this college, Penn State spirit has been more than just an intangible something, spoken in student mass meetings and heard of from Penn State students when the lines were successful. It has often been so real during the football season that possessing it, the student body has been able to transfer it to the Alliance 11s, and lacking it, these same 11s have been, just have been put forth disheartening exhibitions. Basically, we need you out there. And even though we're better than Temple because we don't pay our players, we can't count this as a moral victory. We have no use for that. We need a 12th man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, no, that's the other cult. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Penn State State in... We will be your moral victory. Woo, mm-hmm. 12 nothing. <laughs> and, and, and here's the thing. Cat we, we have more injuries. Oh, oh my like, God. Two more backs are out. They're down to, like at one point, they go to a game with Fewer than 40 players. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh-oh. Temple 12, Penn State 0, Lion Grid 11 holds heavy owl foe to 12 to 0. Again, <laughs> fucking heavy ass owls. The beef index. <laughs> well, look at the rushing yards. My God. Yeah, 288 yeah. rushing yards. Temple had 17 first downs to Penn State's 3. <laughs> Ground and pound, baby. <laughs> if it hadn't been for each team giving up, like the same, like four fumbles for Temple, three for Penn State. Yeah, this would have been a lot worse. Dude, and, and Temple outpunted them. Yeah, let that's... Temple in the Big Ten. Yeah, I'm forty-nine yard. I've been saying forty-nine, <laughs> forty-nine yard average of punts. There was there was a pick six in this game. Temple intercepts yeah. a pass, runs it back eighty yards. Hell yeah. Uh, the from vaunted also, owl defense. Uh, from an alumni, quote, a word about our Nittany Lion mascot. Let's have more of them. Unsung praise for the unknown hero who climbed into that hot skin Saturday, for it certainly can't hurt state spirit and must, and must have brought back memories of other days to many, uh, many of the alumni. It was a hot day this day. And that mascot just... costume, I'm guessing, was made out of actual pelts. <laughs> and probably asbestos and oh, like... Yeah lie uh-huh. i'm just deeply uncomfortable with the phrasing hot skin hot skin hot <laughs> hot skin saturday hot, hot skin, skin. Hot, hot skin saturday is a great ending. Right. hot skin in bio hot skin in bio oh, God. <laughs> nudes in bio dickinson 10 penn state 6 so close Impair. they broke a twin a, a 28 year record. Dickinson hadn't won it when it's been state in 28 years. Looks to me like Dickinson gets the law school back. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. Now, here's the funny thing. Before the game, the coach was afraid that the team might be overconfident because they played Temple so well in their 12 0 loss. <laughs> that is such coach bullshit brain. I love it. It's like, my team's going to get overconfident because we got our asses handed to us 12 0 by Temple. And lo and behold, they did get their asses run over. Uh, This was actually way more of a, like, Penn State should have had this. The stats don't make any sense. Yeah, they don't. Mm -hmm. So I'll read some of those. Penn State first downs 13, Dickinson 5. Penn State yards gained by rushing 204. 
Dickinson 65. Yards gained by passing, Dickinson had more, 96 to, 40, to 24. Penn State had 110 yards of penalties. <laughs> uh, please note that with those yards gained by passing, that's on one completion. That's, oh, yes. 96, that's 96 yards, yards on one completion. One completion. <laughs> a 96 yep. yard completion. <laughs> Throwing bombs, Dickinson. <laughs> yep. But just one. But just one. One bomb. That's all we got. <laughs> and this is another bit of stat from that. For the, third, for the third successive Saturday, an opponent player has run more than half the field's length for a touchdown against the Lions. <laughs> I mean, 96 yards of length there, yeah. almost the entire yard. <laughs> we, are, we are trying to just... Okay, uh, also, slate handicapped by visitors' weight. Simpex slated to fill tackle pose. It's always about big beefy, big, beefy boys. Then they go to Syracuse. Lions depart for engagement with Syracuse 11. Bob Higgins to revamp lineup against Orange Gritters. So they move a bunch of people around and they get there early to try to do something here. This game for the past 20 years had been a one score game and usually under like 20 points total. And once again, it was seven zero Syracuse wins it. This game was very close. This also has weird stats like forward, per, forward passes attempted and lateral passes attempted as two different things. That is a weird set of stats oh, okay. that I don't think I've ever seen before. Bill Orange's day. Syracuse had more rushing and Syracuse, they let I me mean, Syracuse limited Penn state to, let's see, that would be 120 ish yards total of offense. Yeah. Penn state was the, was not the only team which marred an unblemished record held since 1926 uh, in the in before Saturday's encounter, Syracuse had not lo lost to Syr sorry, Penn State had not lost to Syracuse since 26. So that would have been 31, five years. So mm -hmm. another streak gets snapped. And then next week, Penn State will host Pitt for the first time in 29 years. Even though at this point they were still the most common opponent that they had in 31, but had not played them in 29 years. No, they had not played. And in Penn State, in, Penn State. Okay. At, in okay. Happy okay. Valley for 29 years. This is still a topic of debate between Pitt, Pitt and Penn State fans, because Penn State fans will be like, we didn't play in State College in the 30s, so we got to play two for one in Pittsburgh now, pretending like it was easy to get to State College then. It's not easy to get to State College now, no. and Interstate 99 exists. <laughs> Back then, you basically had to walk over the fucking mountains to get there. Both ways, uphill. Yes. Right. Same pair of shoes for seven years. Interlude part three. Freshmen appear in weird garb at initiation tonight. All first year men must wear paper hats, green ties, or Apache dress. Oh, Jesus. What? No. No. God. Red rally, red rally oh, scheduled oh, after wow. performances. Sophomores will criticize acts from bleacher seats on first floor of Hall. I mean, Wait, come on, sophomores. Criticize I like the, Apache the sophomores dress. is the Greek chorus here. <laughs> and I mean, so the only, this the is... only Apache that is cool with me is the song by Sugar Hill Gang. Yeah. That's oh, it. yeah. That's right. No, I, I assume this Apache dress is not the Sugar Hill Gang in 31. Freshmen will entertain upperclassmen next Friday night with acts. May offer individual performances. Quote, bringing down the curtain of the old days of paddle swinging, bone breaking, and molasses slinging. Freshmen will entertain upperclassmen at stunt night next Friday. Y'all, I want to talk about those three things. Paddle swinging, bone breaking, and molasses slinging. Thank you, sir. May I have another? What the fuck? So what the is going on? The paddle thing and the molasses thing comes up so many times in this, in this like set of newspapers. Because they used to have this tradition called stunt night, which is where freshmen got to stop wearing their dinks. But it was a, like, it was a hazing night. And so there was molasses being thrown and paddles, and usually someone broke an arm. And uh, it was too wild for 1931 yeah. Central Pennsylvania, and they were like, we got to stop this. So what is the, what is, okay, so like there was the movie Old School, which is like 2003 yep. now, which is, is very dated. There was like, like wrestling in, in like a, a, a tub at the time. Like what were they used? It was like. Loop, it was loop. Okay, so so uh, no. we're back to lube again. You've never uh, lube wrestled before? Okay. Oh my god! Oh, not all of us went to Dartmouth. Uh, okay, <laughs> not not all of us went to the home of. Uh, okay, I just couldn't remember what it was. It's lube. 
I'm just in my head that they're wrestling in molasses now. I'm going to have to look further onto this because uh, you are going to look further into this, but you know, as I look up the current going rate of the 55 gallons of lube, no, they took it off. <laughs> no. That's a business. Oh no, expense. you can still get it. Uh, Passion Ooh. Natural Water Based Lubricant, fifty five gallons, one thousand seven hundred and ninety nine dollars. The lube exchange is going up, kids. That's too uh, much that's... money. If we, how it's... many Vietnamese dong is that? Uh... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Not to the dong. If, if I just if I just buy video. some barrels of lube. Inflation goes up. I sell them at higher. That works, right? Liquid gold. I'm not a... like how... <laughs> Liquid gold. Jesus um, when desert, so that when, is, when, when desertification 40... comes, I will be king because I will have the lube. Yeah. So um, that's 44,580,120 Vietnamese dongs. That's too okay. many dongs. It's, it's, it's Dune. That's a lot I just of have, It's Dune, but I just have giant barrels of lube. A lot of dune dogs. The lube must flow. It's water-based lubricant. That's not good for sandworms. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Speak for yourself. I got this. <laughs> what is what is the saying? Did they say like, oh, God. no, I what? can't do it. I'm like, no, it's just whatever. I'm done. Okay, I'm sorry. So are you suggesting that Jordan is Lisan Al Gaib? Uh -huh. Jordan's the Messiah. L L Lisan Al Gaib. Uh, vo voice from the. <laughs> Actually, voice from the outer world is the translation. Okay. Shut up, nerd. Uh, so, yeah. So, now they have this new thing now that's not going to involve as many broken bones or paddles or molasses. They're just going to have Talk people fall out of buildings on Atherton? Oh, I'm sorry. That was out loud. And the... <sighs> Jesus Christ. And the alumni, of course, are like, kids these days are soft. Back in my day, we broke bones on stunt night. Because nothing ever changes. Uh, the hit game was unfortunately homecoming. And Pitt was I very good mean, this year. Fortunately, forty-one to six. Oh, Ooh, Jesus fuck yeah. Christ! Hell yeah! Pitt, this is where the polio. season goes very bad. Yeah, this is the, where the season right. absolutely just goes like the the bottom falls out here. Pitt overwhelms Nittany, Nittany Gridman with forty-one to six margin, four touchdowns in the opening period of the game. <laughs> Line fumbles lead to early Panther losses. Basically, it was twenty-eight zero before the first quarter ended. Oh, this is Penn State's 2014 Penn S or Pitt Georgia Tech game. Yes, it is. Huh. Yeah. 41 cool. points on eight first downs. That's, a, that's good a job, Pitt. That's, yeah. That's insane. That's insane. I, I read this as minus five forward passes attempted. I saw that too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How is this mathematically possible? <laughs> Just minus <laughs> negative five passes. Like, hey, we're going to throw it backwards. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Ten thousand people know, saw State this. By the way, help. everyone this is, saw. This is the second consecutive year that the, the Penn State's opponents have scored more than forty points at homecoming. <laughs> got to, got to get better. It was Colgate the year before. Colgate beat, dropped them forty to zero. Jesus. Got to schedule better, guys. They lost a toothpaste. Game seven. Speaking of toothpaste, Colgate thirty-two, Penn State seven. <laughs> Colgate's Colgate, back. For Colgate had seventeen first downs and rushed for two hundred and eighty-two yards. Jesus. Maroon Foe makes five sustained advances for scores in hard-fought tilt. I said, this is where sort of the whole thing comes apart. They get to Lafayette. 33-0. Five touchdowns. Embarrassing. Lions resist Maroon offense in strong first quarter defensive play. First quarter, baby. Hey, hey, we shut zero, zero. God, God, this shut him out. Shut him out. ULM game. Don't ask <laughs> what happened after that. <laughs> We were only down seven to three to Ole Miss at halftime this year. Go Listen, ULM. John Wall is the hero of Game Six, and Penn State is the hero of the first quarter. For th the third consecutive week, Penn State's football opponents have scored more than thirty points against them. Oh my god! Boy, that, they were one hundred six and thirteen in the last three games for points. <clears throat> uh, the is the freshman team better? Because remember, freshmen couldn't play varsity at this point. No. The freshman team crossed the goal line for the first and only score of the season against Dickinson Seminary. Opposing oh. teams recorded a total of 120 points to seven scored by the Nittany freshman. The it was not going to get better. Yeah, it was not going to get better. <laughs> Last game of the season. At this point, they stopped even giving us any sort of like clip in the yearbook. There's no stats. <laughs> the newspaper just stops. Like they're like, we're on the basketball season. There's wrestling going on. We're There's putting boxing. The team in the witness protection program. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Lions brace for practice. Lions eleven begins practice for Lehigh. 
They oh got my this, God. That was the headline of the article about the West Virginia game. <laughs> Prepares to play, play. postseason cherry game That's at right. Franklin Bills Saturday. It was a charity game. Dash, Gritters defeated by West Virginia. <laughs> Hey, man, hey, we got a charity drive coming up against Lehigh. Don't worry about what happened against West Virginia. Was I West Virginia know. heavy, by the way? No, I'm not sure, but they were burly, according to this. Uh-huh. The burly Mountaineers. The men. Yeah, fresh replacements of the Mountaineers in the last quarter were responsible for an aerial attack, which brought two more touchdowns, however, and the Nealman annex a 19-0 victory. Beth, what is that? I don't know. It has maybe it's the coach's name or something. I like maybe. the annex. I like the annex to nineteen to zero victory. They were annexing mm-hmm. stuff. One. Uh, the, the... Uh, yeah, yeah. That's ha. Huh, the West Virginia's head coach that year was Greasy Neil. There we go, Greasy <laughs> Neil. Okay, Greasy Neil. You could just nickname people anything. See if I can find a picture of Greasy Neil. Okay. Are we back to like talking about Lube again? Humphrey for Bogart. real? Oh, make... see, I was picturing him as a giant pepperoni roll. <laughs> In the chat, I have just posted a picture of Greasy Neil. Coach the Eagles? Apparently. Alfred Earl Greasy Neal. Oh, Jesus. Played for West Virginia, Wesleyan, Canton, Dayton. Oh, he's yeah, no. He's originally from Parkersburg, so he was he was from about 20 miles downriver from uh, Point Pleasant and the Mockman. Yeah, he was head coach of the Eagles for nine years. And was Virginia's baseball coach for six years. <laughs> I love when you could just get all the jobs. I coach every okay. sport. Right, like that's, and I'm an athletic director yeah. too. When and football like, season came around, he would leave baseball and fulfill his football duties, albeit playing about 90% of a baseball season most years, with the exception of the 1919 World Series. So, what happens after all this? Like, Syracuse, is the Syracuse bottom out entirely? Not, I mean, not Syracuse, Penn State, same, yeah. same school. Do they bottom out entirely? Not really. As you can see here, nah, this, is coach, this is Coach Bezdick. So he ends up going like 123, 83, and 16 overall. They go to a Rose Bowl eventually. He ends up retiring because uh, of health issues, but is known as one of the, the better coaches. The guy that succeeds him actually only lasts one year and then is like, I want to go back to being a line coach again. I do not like being head coach at Penn State. <laughs> <laughs> and from there, yeah, like it, it dips a couple more times, but this was sort of the really bottom part of it. And Unlike a lot of the other stories that we had where it was something very clear that was causing the problem, we sort of have that here with them not, quote unquote, paying players anymore and having to bounce back from that. I'm actually not sure how long that lasted at Penn State. They weren't even doing scholarships. They were doing like D3 level stuff. Now it would be called D3. So I'll look that up. But yeah, this is the worst season at Penn State. I hope you got your schadenfreude out of that. Oh, I sure did. Enjoyed the story. I did. I do want to take one moment to appreciate the 2020 Penn State season, which is still the only season to date in which Penn State started 0 and 5. That brought me a lot of joy. Yeah, the the panic on that one was if they hadn't turned it around, they turned it around against Michigan, I think. That was like the funniest part. I think that was the turnaround game. Yeah, God. (sighs) Momento Mori, Penn State. Yep, it can always get bad again. That was that was basically like inside the Discord, and we did not have a Twitter sickos game of the week, the Penn State Michigan. Yeah, I remember um, that. We did not have a Twitter at the time. That was the game of the week. Uh, Michigan was our 2020 like champions, which again we didn't start the Twitter account until like <laughs> the end of the 2020 season, which was ridiculous. But yeah, basically. That that game was the sickos game of the week, the 2020 Penn State and Michigan oh. version, which because they were because they were both coming in winless or something like that. Yeah, yeah it was it was such a uh, but the COVID season was such a weird season and such a one off uh, in I was, many different I, cases. I was wrong about uh, so what happened to Bob Higgins is that his first season, which is 1930, he goes three four and two. He goes two and eight this season, which I argue is really one and seven because that last game shouldn't it's, count. It's a charity game, yeah. Then goes two and five, three, three and one, four and four, four and four. He doesn't get to a winning season until one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight seasons in. Which is exactly Three-two. how it would go now. Yes. Yeah. Totally. Sure, surely Penn State would sit on a two and five season. Surely Penn State would definitely react calmly to and you know, rationally. Few... Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, his his high water mark was forty seven. And in 47, like, they had a great team. They gave up four points a game that whole season. Wow. 
and they ended up tying the Cotton Bowl against SMU 1313. Perfect season except for that tie. And they were ranked, I think, fourth at the end, and they tied number three SMU. Like, that was the high water mark of that, of that version of Penn State. And then after that, like I said, uh, after Bob Higgins retires, Joe Badnick becomes coach for one year, who was the Lions coach. He goes, I would not like to be head coach anymore. Just put me back at Lions coach. And they bring in Rip Engel from um, Brown. And he coaches at Penn State for another 15 years. Go. That is the worst season of all time. Okay, Liam, thank you so much for coming and chatting with us, sir. Hey, no problem. Thank you for having me. Shooting the shit. And where can folks find you besides here? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at not Liam Anderson with a zero because I'm late. I uh, and you can follow my two podcasts. Well, there's your problem and ten thousand losses, which is Philly sports with a pro labor perspective. I mean, I, if if you haven't listened to Well, There's Your Problem, it also has a very, we'll say, pro-labor perspective as well. Yes, yes. And 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 pro-keeping Liam out of jail for actionable statements. Yeah, thank you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the last episode, which I, I'm not necessarily, like, too familiar with the podcast. Everybody else is, apparently. But uh, the last episode, I, I listened to you, uh, uh, the podcast, just to try to get a, a flavor of it. And I really enjoyed the, the railroad. Uh, to the Florida Keys, um, and the surgical precision of the hurricanes that kept <laughs> wiping out the kept railroad. Fucking it over, yeah. Uh, along with the tree that kills you, instant life. Instant. <laughs> it just. The, I believe it's the McAneel tree. If I said that correctly, I believe but, so. I just look. At, growing up. Okay, I if had, you Google tree that kills you instantly, that tree does come up. And it Thank does you, come Google. up. The tree that kills you. You're not too shitty yet. It does. It does. It, it is a great episode. It is a great listen. Uh, there is uh, apparently a redhead that gets committed halfway through. Sorry, Beth. Uh, it's fine. It's, it's going to happen to Beth eventually. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Eventually. But no, the, the, the last episode was, was phenomenal. I really enjoyed it. It was, I, I mean, like I've always hated Key West. Um, just, <laughs> there, there has been oh okay, God, God. Baby. <laughs> there has been a hatred for Key West uh, in my life. Uh, just, just you know, I, again, my mom's from Miami, right? And my, my, you know, my dad's from Pittsburgh, whatever. But apparently, uh, just this is probably something I, I need to work out in therapy. But apparently, uh, my 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 dad's mom. So I guess this would be my grandma, which I didn't real, realize was my grandma. She left the family and moved to Key West at, at some point in time, uh, and then we found her on Big Pine Key, which is basically where this guy is trying to build this this incredible train bridge that keeps getting wiped out. Uh, <laughs> And they're building it on embankments, which is right past the seven mile bridge. I'm like, this episode is totally meant for me (laughs) because I hated this. I hated it. And then, I mean, it's just ridiculous. But uh, I love the episode and the tree that kills you was just phenomenal. Listen, and just just a lot of fun. Uh, It, it, you know, I'm going to listen to more of the podcast. So you got a new follower and a new patron. Uh, So I appreciate you. you do coming on the podcast, which is I mean, I did not even know about the tree that kills you, which uh, now now I know. I would like to take this moment to plug for the FIA episode, as this is the Pennsylvania Palooza episode of our podcast. You want to learn more about how fucked up Pennsylvania state government is? Uh Learn about our system of higher education from Liam and our friends at Well, There's Your Problem. Okay, folks. So we've got for today. Liam, as always, thank you so much, sir. And we'll see everyone on the other side. Thank you.